Thomas Paine, Thomas Paine, Thomas Paine, Sam Adams, Sam Adams, Sam Adams, Benjamin Franklin, Benjamin Franklin, Benjamin Franklin. These men spoke up for what they thought was right. From their courage came such documents as the Declaration of Independence and the Constitution of the United States. From their willingness to speak what was sometimes unpopular but right, we enjoy such liberties as freedom of speech, the right to keep and bear arms, and freedom of religion. There are those who still wish to oppress our freedoms, and there are still patriots willing to stand up and defend life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Men like Zeb Bell, who honor our founding fathers and what they stood for. It's now time for Zeb at the ranch, speaking up and defending your freedoms. Brought to you by Magic Valley Les Schwab Tire Centers and all of the other great advertisers on the program. And now, Zeb Bell. And we have a little note to all the dear little snowflakes out there. I have breaking news for all those that want to erase American history during the day or in the dead of night. Number one, if you have minimum wage skills now, taking down statues won't change that. If you're up to your neck in college loan debt, taking down statues won't change that either. The nation will still be $20 trillion in debt. And radical Islamists will still want you dead. And last but not least, little snowflakes, there will still be only two genders. So get with the program. Get real. I feel better. Good morning. Here comes Kate Smith and God bless America. Followed by a patriot with our Pledge of Allegiance. Call in. Let's start the week off right. Good morning. Thank you very much, Zeb Bell, Zeb at the Ranch, with our major sponsor, your Magic Valley, Les Schwab Tire Centers. I almost knocked the water over here on the table. All seven locations of your Magic Valley, Les Schwab Tire Centers, of course, with the big fall tire sale going on right now. And, of course, some of our great advertisers, like Western Waste Services, always at your disposal. Call them at 734-6969. Let's go to the phone line right now and have our Pledge of Allegiance. Good morning. Good morning. Well, how are you? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands. One nation, indivisible, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, sir. Got to run to the weather, but I appreciate your calling in. That was a good, good job. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Right now, we're going to have the weather forecast to start off our Monday programming, and it's brought to you by KNR Rental. Hello, Roger and the crew. Roger this, Roger it out. 256 South, 600 West of Hayburn, 678-3122, the number to call. And they've got all the tools and the equipment, the forklifts, all the way to the lawnmowers. Man, what are you waiting for? They've got it all for you. And they've been in business since 1979, so they know. You better get a hold of them today, K&R Rental, 678-3122. Here is our weather forecast. Enjoy today because it looks like as we move through the week, it's going to feel more like fall. Looks like partly sunny skies for today. A little bit on the breezy side. Winds out of the southwest right around 10 to 15 miles an hour. Gusts possible as high as 30. Looking at high of 74 tonight. We do have a 50% chance of showers mostly after midnight. Going to be cloudy with a low of 44. Still going to be breezy as well. For tomorrow, 20% chance of rain. Showers with a high of 56. Overnight low of 38. And as for the rest of the week, it's going to be rainy. Feels almost like winter. For Wednesday, rain showers, high of 62, overnight low of 37. For Thursday, more rain showers, only a high of 48 with an overnight low of 35. And rain showers also expected for Friday with a high of 55. That's your weather for us. That's the rain. Woo! <laughs> There's some changes. I need to get my mucklucks out of the closet. Hey, brought to you by K&R Rental, 256 South, 600 West of Hayburn. And they've got everything. I'm telling you what, boys and girls, garden tools, painting equipment, trenchers, hand tools, you name it, it's there. K&R Rental, 256 South, 600 West of Hayburn, 678-3122. 
I missed some birthdays last week on Thursday and Friday, and I've got to get these in here right now. Uh, we had uh, the man that can out-eat anybody at Lunch Bunch. My dear, dear friend Jack Euler had his birthday last Thursday. Happy birthday to Wolfman Jack. And on Friday, a lovely lady that uh, absolutely, I hope she had a happy, happy birthday, Joanne Clark. So that was last week's birthdays. And I do apologize for not getting those in. Last week on Thursday, we were over at Patriot's Day for uh, Ramsey Heating and Electric, and I don't know what to say other than, wow, we were absolutely deluged with great people coming on the radio, and I thank each and every one of them. Uh, We really celebrated Patriots Day at Ramsey Heating and Electric last week. Thank you very much. And today is a very special day, and we're going to be talking about it in about 15, 18 minutes, right in that neck of the woods, so you stay tuned. want to remind you, too, about our friends over at Daryl's Cleaners. Hello, Kevin and Cindy and the whole crew over at Daryl's Cleaners at 1223 Albion Avenue in Burley. Just the other day, somebody was asking me, and for the life of me, I can't remember, I was in Burley, and somebody asked me, do they really do the washing over at Daryl's? I said, yeah, buddy. They will wash, dry, fold, and iron all your clothes. And all you have to do is just take them in. I mean, wow, what a time saver. And in many cases, a lifesaver. Daryl's Cleaners, 1223 Albion Avenue in Burley. Stop in and see them today. And I hope, I hope you've got your winter coats clean because, man, it sounds like we're going to need them. Get them in there to Daryl's Cleaners in Burley. Absolutely the best. And like I was talking a moment ago about Ramsey Heating and Electric, we were over there last week on Thursday. Wow, we've done that. Patriots Day uh, and Patriots Week for like 18 years, and you folks never let me down. One lady that did not get thanked, and from the bottom of my heart, I want to give her a great big shout-out thank you this morning, Dorothy Silcox, and she brought over a delicious, wow, angel food cake and then the divinity. (laughs) That lady is something special. So if you see Dorothy today or talk to her, give her a great big hug. We really appreciate her. Yeah, we were over at Ramsey Heating and Electric at 2600 Overland Avenue in Burley, and they open the doors at 7.30 in the morning till 5, Monday through Friday, and they've got all your... I'm going to emphasize the heating for this week, because it's really going to drop off the table and get chilly. Heating and electrical needs at Ramsey Heating and Electric, so you be sure and stop in and see them today, and it may be that you might want to crank up your furnace a little bit, so check out the furnace filters at Ramsey Heating and Electric in Burley. Really, really good folks. All right, now it's your turn. 436 22 441 866 927 4587. Riots in St. Louis. I have got numerous, numerous stories about the rioting in St. Louis, Missouri over a judge's decision of uh, acquitting a St. Louis policeman by the name of Jason Stockley. Let me just give you a little semblance of what happened here. Uh, The Black Lives Matter protesters back there, as I said, they are worthless. They are worthless. And they are clashing with police over a judge acquitting St. Louis cop Jason Stockley and acquitting him of first-degree murder. Now, let's talk a little bit about what happened. He was involved in the shooting death of a heroin, heroin drug dealer, Anthony Lamar Smith. Now, here's the truth to the whole story. Smith, a black man and known drug dealer, was attempting to flee from police when he slammed his vehicle into a police cruiser and then took off, causing a dangerous high-speed chase. 
Policeman Stockley, who was white, claimed he shot the suspect who was black in self-defense because he thought Smith was reaching for a gun. According to St. Louis Circuit Judge Timothy Wilson, the prosecutors failed to prove beyond a reasonable doubt that Officer Stockley did not act in self-defense, and Smith, the black drug dealer, was out on parole for convictions of drug distribution, theft, and illegal gun possession at the time of the shooting. Black Lives Matter has been rioting back in St. Louis. They've been assaulting the police. There have been 80 or more people arrested. There have been numerous policemen assaulted and injured. And this isn't going to stop. I am so outraged that many in the black community do not want the rule of law administered if it's against any of them or members of their race. And many of the protesters were chanting, America was never great. And kicking in windows, looting, and destroying public and private property is absolutely not acceptable at the store owners and business owners expense many of which don't have insurance and many of which are looking at five six ten thousand dollars out of their pocket to restore their business and open the doors if they can for business again i am so sick and tired of hearing oh these poor minorities oh black lives matter oh Oh, they're just riding because they don't have what others have. Well, then I would like to make a suggestion here, folks. And it's really an earth-shattering suggestion that I'm sure nobody has ever thought of before. Go get a job, get to work, be self-responsible, and make something out of yourself instead of waiting and depending on everybody, including the government, to fend for you. Wow. Isn't that tough to figure out? Calls are welcome, 436-2244-1-866-927-4587. Also, I want to remind everybody about our dear friends. Caller, I will be there in a moment. you got to hang tough with me. Don't get nervous. Denny's Restaurant at 611 North Overland and Burley and the other location at 291 Pauline Road in Twin Falls. Whether it's breakfast, whether it's lunch, whether it's dinner, anytime, all the time at America's Diner, the food is fantabulous. The people are so nice and the service just great. Great. You're going to love it. So stop in today and see them. And this week on Thursday is, yes, you get guessed it, Zeb's Lunch Bunch at Denny's Restaurant, 611 North Overland and Burley. Yep, the home of Zeb's Lunch Bunch. We'll see you there on Thursday. Good morning, caller. You're on the air. Hello again. You know, this deal you're talking about right here, there is no mention about fingerprints. Now, if that officer had shot him and because he's seen a gun in that car, wouldn't it be conclusive if they were to check to see if the officer had any fingerprints on that? I've never heard one. No, 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 no. Wait a minute, wait a minute, Keith. I don't know where you're headed on this, but let's just stick with the facts. Uh, The officer shot the suspect because he thought the suspect was going to turn around and shoot him with a gun. Right. Okay. So what are you talking about fingerprints? Well, if that officer had planted that gun in there, which they're trying to prove, or that's what upsets them, it would have the officer's fingerprints yeah. on it, wouldn't it? You know, and this, you know, we can read and add into the story all we want to, but I'm going to stay with the specifics. I'm not going to add anything to it. I'm not going to even question what happened. The judge found the policeman not guilty and acquitted him. And the black community back there is outraged. However, most of the... Uh, the terrorist i'm going to call them terrorists uh black lives matter and everybody else coming into town most of them don't even live there they're basically paid thugs to come in and cause a problem i agree with you 100 percent, but i still believe that fingerprints on that gun of the officer would you know prove that he planted it well i don't believe he did i believe he is totally innocent but why don't they bring out the facts 
to the public so they'll quit rioting. Yeah, but the whole thing is they don't want to listen. Keith, they don't want to listen. Uh, this is a situation in America today. You can lay down the facts that are hardcore facts, and still groups like Black Lives Matter are going to distort the facts. They're not going to listen to the facts. They're going to riot. They're going to burn. They're going to loot, all in the name of how dare you arrest and or shoot one of our own, even though there was criminal activity going on. Well, don't you think that they ought to say now, if you are caught rioting in a town, but you do not live, and then you're caught again, wouldn't that be double jeopardy? And then they should put them in prison. Well, Keith, here's another aspect to this. And I, I took a lot of criticism over this statement that I made two weeks ago, but I stand behind it. The vermin, and that's what they are, the human vermin that would loot, steal, burn and break windows of innocent people that are trying to make a living in their businesses i honestly think when they're out of control like that they should be shot on sight we've got to stop this insanity in this country well, i'm with you 100 percent on that because these are just innocent bystanders and they're being the victims well and how would you like to own a business back there mr cottom and know that today monday morning you're going to go to nothing but rubble and burning and broken glass, doors all ajar, looting that has taken place. You have nothing. And find out that your insurance policy doesn't cover everything. You, sir, are unemployed and out of work and out of a business. Well, and the other fact is you're not going to have any business while this is going on. You got it, buddy. People you got it. Come in that store. I am so fed up with these crazies taking over America. Oh, the person that called me on my cell phone last week and chewed me out a little bit, two weeks ago, pardon me, uh, well, how these people are just expressing their First Amendment rights. No, they're not. This is not a First Amendment right. They are destroying property. They're jeopardizing human lives. They are absolutely anarchists. That is not a First Amendment right. Yeah, what is it? How's that go about your? Um, never mind. I was going to say something, but anyway, I think this thing is clear out of proportion, and this is not going to be the end of it. No, I unfortunately I agree with you, and Keith, I always appreciate your viewpoint as always, my dear friend. Thank you for calling. All right, buddy. I want to remind you, and I'm going to start up again. I've developed a few little problems with my old hip, and I'm going to start going back over to Burley Physical Therapy and Rehabilitation at 1263 Bennett Avenue, Suite 2 in Burley, and the number to call to make an appointment is 678-1191. They were the ones, honestly, that really got me back going again. With all the miles and the miles and the miles I walked in the bottom of that uh, hydrotherapy pool. And they can help you. They know all the exercises. Like I said, they're the only ones that have that hydrotherapy pool. And they are so sharp in helping you get back to being you. All you have to do is call and make an appointment. 678-1191. Burley Physical Therapy and Rehabilitation. I urge you. I urge you to get a hold of them today. And you know what? Uh, hold on, caller. I'll be right there. I also want to talk a little bit about somebody else that's over in the same neighborhood. And I was so impressed when I went over there to visit with Holly at Pomerel Place, a place for senior living in Burley. And it became so apparent to me, you know, as we get older and we age and we still think that we're an uh, entity upon ourselves that can take care of ourselves, uh-uh, sometimes that's not the case in many times that's not the case and seniors that are living at home all alone face isolation and safety hazards and injuries poor nutrition missed medication please this might be for you contact Pomerel place today a place for senior living at 1301 Bennett Street in Burley the number to call nice people 677-8212 caller good morning you're on the air Yes, I just have a comment about what Keith was saying about the gun. In the first place, we weren't in that courtroom. We don't know what was brought up in that trial. That's right. That's enough said about that. But I heard recently uh, that, and I don't know 
if it's true or not, but it could be that the now the white Caucasians have become the minority or at, at only 43 percent. Have you heard that? No, absolutely. I mean, we're looking at various parts of the country, and I'm going to be called a racist and a uh, honky and everything else if I say this, but yeah, a lot of areas now are seeing the Caucasians move out of the area, or they have, their, their numbers are diminished within certain areas, like St. Louis. But you know, what about the rule of law? I don't care about anybody's color, Adrian. What about the rule of law and what's right and wrong? It applies to all colors, races, religion, everything. But they do not teach that in our schools anymore. If we don't tell our great-grandchildren and get it in their heads, it's all lost. It's gone because nobody understands it anymore. Well, and today is a very special day for that, and I'm going to be talking about that in just a couple of minutes. God bless you. I appreciate your call as always. Thank you very much. And I know what you're talking about. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, calls welcome, 436 2244 1 866 927 4587. I don't know where these people are coming from, honestly, that would stand up and say that uh, Black Lives Matter group, they can defy the law, they can say that uh, no matter what happens, they're above the law. I, I heard something that was really basically stupid the other day on television. They had one of these Black Lives Matter people on there, and they said, well, look, at everybody's against us. You know, our race, why they arrested so many more of us than they did of whites or Mexicans. Wait a minute. What difference do the numbers make? What difference do the percentages make on who's arrested and who's committed a crime when you're doing something wrong, you're going to get nailed. That's the way the law should be. I don't care about ethnicity. I don't care if you're with Black Lives Matter or whatever. Here was a case of a known drug dealer, a heroin dealer, that had been arrested and had been known to have drug distribution. He was a criminal theft a burglar, and had illegal gun possessions. He's not a good guy. Now, because he's black, oh, they're above being incarcerated or arrested or thrown in jail for their crimes? No. And when they run away like he did, and the circumstances prevail, these poor policemen on the street, or anywhere, they have just a that quick to make a decision as to protect themselves or not. Being a policeman has to be, has to be, one of the absolute hardest jobs in the world today. Because you have to make a split decision, just like that. Split second decision. And your life and other lives will change forever. They've got the hardest job in the world. Oh, my goodness. Uh, I want to remind you, too, oh, my buddy Gary Shoresman. I'll tell you what, he is putting on the 101st Old Settlers Dinner this coming Saturday, September 23rd, at the Rupert Elks Lodge. It is going to be a great big gobble-gobble turkey dinner. Woo! It's going to be good. And this year's theme, Homesteaders. And they're going to have a complete story of all the dry farmers who took up the areas of Kamima, Black Pine Mountain, City of Rocks, etc. This is going to be good. Anything that Gary does is good and interesting. Interesting. For dinner reservations, call Gary Shoresman at 312-1556. Don't miss this. I mean, I wished I was going to be around and there this weekend because anything Gary Shoresman does is absolutely first class. 101st Old Settlers Dinner at the Rupert Elks this coming Saturday at noon. Also, I want to say thank you very much to Gano Landscaping and Sprinkler Service. Hello, Scott. How you doing, old buddy? And uh, now, now is the time. Did you hear that weather forecast early this morning? Ho, ho, ho. It's going to get a little chilly and uh, windy, and we're going to hope and pray that a big old tree limb doesn't come through your big bay window. So make sure that you've got your trees trimmed and pruned. And also, now's a great time to be thinking about putting in a new sprinkler system for next year or fixing up the 
the old one. You call him today. Absolutely, Scott and his crew can take care of you. 438-2485 or 431-8733. Today is a very, very special day. And I absolutely am going to ask a question right now. And uh, on behalf of Sophie's Chatterbox, we're going to give away a dozen cookies, delicious cookies from their bakery Mm -mm. at uh, 530 E Street in Rupert, right on the square. They've got a great restaurant. They've got a great bakery at Sophie's Chatterbox. And if you win, all you got to do is call over there and let them know when you're going to be in for their cookies. What is so special about today? In American history, what is so special about today in American history? The first person that calls me with the right answer gets to win a dozen cookies from Sophie's Chatterbox in Rupert. What is so special about this day in American history? 436-2244-1866. 436-2244-1866-927-4587. I will say this. If you don't know the answer to the question, I'd be a little bit embarrassed. I would be. Caller, good morning. You're on the air. Good morning, Jeb. It's Constitution Day. Hopefully you've got it and read it. Well, I have read it probably more than most, and that's not bragging, that's a fact. And uh, I've got two or three copies laying right here on this desk that are dog-eared, highlighted, and everything else. But this is a very important day. It was signed 230 years ago. And Jerry Voss, you have won a dozen cookies, and so call over there and let them know when you're going to be there to pick them up. Okay, now I'm going to tell you what I'm going to do there. I'm going to let Wills have them cookies. Because I can't eat them. I don't need them. I'm already too fat and ugly. But I appreciate the cookies. Well, I'm going to tell Wheels that you have donated the cookies to him. He's a little rug rat that absolutely likes to eat anything he can get his hands on. So we'll tell him that. He's a little hungry. He looks like he hasn't had a real square meal for at least an hour. Uh, yeah, at least an hour. Jerry Voss. Hey. hey, hey. <laughs> Jerry Voss. Have a wonderful day. May the Lord bless. All right, buddy. There you go, Wheels. You won the cookies. Compliments of Jerry Voss and Sophie's Chatterbox. So you call them and let them know when you want your cookies and get in there and pick them up, okay? I definitely will. And uh, to Jerry's comment, just wait until next lunch, bunch. Okay. <laughs> All right, buddy. Thank you very much. Hey, calls are welcome. 436 4587 Don't forget, everybody deserves to feel good inside. That's right. Inside the house and Ramsey Heating and Electric, along with Lennox, can make you feel good inside your home. Oh, my goodness. You can get up to a $1,600 rebate on a new Lennox home comfort system. Call and find out more. Ramsey Heating and Electric and Lennox, 678-0459. All right, calls are welcome, 436-2244-1-866-927-4587. In another story that is it's so repulsive and disgusting to me, the case of Bradley Manning. Now, I want it to be known here, I'll say this every time this story comes up for scrutiny and conversation. I will not, underline the word not, I will not call him by his transgender name. Reason obvious. He committed his crimes of being a traitor against the United States as a soldier to our country, the United States of America. So Bradley Manning, this disgusting transgender, was asked by, and this blows me away, Harvard University to speak as a respected fellow. Yeah, no kidding. And there was so much outrage. Yet People were yelling, how can you have at Harvard University a traitor come up and speak at the podium as a respected fellow? Well, the outrage was such that finally, 
<laughs> Harvard University saw the light and they disinvited him. But there are still some sick, perverted students there that want him to speak. He's a traitor to the country. And honestly, uh, he should have been shot for what he did to betray us, the people of the United States, and our United States of America. Caller, stay with me. I'll be right with you. I want to remind everybody, of course, about our dear friends at Barry Equipment and Rental. Oh, my goodness. Uh, Juan over here at the Burley location and the whole crew. What nice people. i got to give Juan a call here after the program's over. And they've got three locations in uh, Jerome, Twin Falls, and 159 West Highway 30 in Burley. They have all the equipment to get the job done right. All you have to do is just get a hold of them today. Barry Equipment and Rental sales service and parts need a bobcat excavator they've got them in all shapes and sizes new and used excavators for sale or rent hey give them a call all the equipment rentals all the retail equipment sales barry equipment and rental jerome twin falls and 159 west highway 30 in burley caller good morning good morning sir how are you i'm doing good doing real good hey on those business business owners back in St. Louis where these people are doing all the damage, first off, they had nothing to do with the verdict, the That's outcome, right. or anything, but you're, they're suffering. But I'll guarantee you, if I had a business back there, and I knew there was going to be protests and stuff, I would be defending my business, and anybody that even tried to break a window they'd be hauling them off on a stretch. You know, Doug, right there, uh, I've known you for a long time, and you are a straight shooter, straight up guy, and you're blunt to the point, and I respect that. I would be, if I were a store owner, honestly, I've thought about this, talked it over with Deanne, I would get an army cot, I'd be sleeping in the business, and I'm, I mean this, the first person that tries to kick my windows in or break my door down or loot or burn, that person had better have good insurance. Yeah, they better be packing an ID so we can notify the next of kin. I totally agree. That's my feeling of it. No, I totally agree. Destroy my property. I have a right to defend it. In this day and age of uh, the the lowly left that has reared its ugly head to take over America with anarchy and chaos, it's got to be put down and it's got to be stopped. And I will let the words flow in any manner necessary. And also, too, we need to put the blame where the blame is due. The last eight years of a president who did not like the laws, so he didn't even want to enforce them, who encouraged this stuff, and now this is where we're at. And we're going to have to, like a spoiled kid, we're going to have to take things away. It's going to be tough love. We've got to put them in their place. If you show up to a riot, I mean all policemen, I respect every policeman, but the police force... They need to come out, and if you show up with a mask, you are going to be arrested. (laughs) If you show up with a billy club, you are going to be arrested. If you want a peaceful protest, you want to voice your First Amendment right, do so. But you don't need a club, a mask, or anything else to voice your First Amendment And you you said it very succinctly in the opening of your remarks about how these business owners, they haven't done anything to anybody except pursue the American dream of owning their own business, promoting their business, and serving people, and now their windows kicked in, they've been burned out, uh, many have been looted. Why, Doug, and for what purpose? is to divide America. Yep. That's the purpose right there. And also, think about it a little bit, too. A lot of these protesters are being bust in and paid. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, we mentioned that. Owners need to get to the bottom and find out who's paying and then get a class action lawsuit against that person for damages, loss of income, and not 
that would also put a stop to it. You got it. Doug, while I have you on the line, you were one of the very first people that called me and said that you were going to donate a pair of new boots to Texas. I want to give a little shout out right now that we have talked to one of the main teachers with the Texas FFA, and her name is Mary Wilson. I talked to her earlier this morning, and she said they are in desperate need of boots. Uh, They absolutely, all the clothing, all the boots, everything is gone. And uh, thank you, she said. We've got a truck going down at the middle to latter part of October with all the boots and some of the tack we're collecting. And Deanne is in the process of calling and finding some of the distribution points as to where people can drop off their boots. But this is a big deal. And we're going to have another of the FFA teachers down there in Texas on our program Wednesday. So please, folks, Folks, if you've got some really good quality boots that you're not wearing anymore, our friends down in Texas need help, and we're going to be a distribution point. Doug, thank you. You betcha. And I challenge other businesses out there like myself, just that are listening, go buy a pair of boots and let's add to this. Absolutely. Let's make this. Make them have to get two trailers to haul it down. You know, i got to tell you a funny story. Mary said, when I was talking to her this morning, Mary Wilson, she, I said, well, now, we're collecting boots, and she says, can you do this? Would it be impolite to say that, and this is her drawl, Western Texas drawl, we got some big old boys down here, and they got some big old feet. So if you got some people up there that got boot sizes 15 to 16, don't hesitate, because we got big boys down here. <laughs> well, they feed them well down there. I the know feet. they do. Hey, Doug, God bless you, man. Thank you so much. You betcha. All and right. Remember senior centers also, guys. All right. All Take right. care, my friend. Don't forget, too, Scott Jackson Trucking is looking for really good, qualified people to join the Scott Jackson Trucking family. It's just a call away. If you want to work for a really good company, Scott Jackson Trucking, 311 Rose Street in Jerome. And believe me, they have a very competitive wage to offer benefits, and they don't lay off in the so-called slow seasons. So get a hold of them today. They really have the best of equipment and they're ready to have you make a possibility of employment at Scott Jackson Trucking today. Call them, 324-3004. That number again, 324-3004, Scott Jackson Trucking. Calls are welcome and appreciated, 436-2244-1-866-927-4587. By the way, uh, uh, about two weeks ago, You know, we had kind of the roof cave in, and we had to redo our entire septic system. I know, I know, I know. We called the best, and I mean that. I have been so happy with the net result, so happy with their work, so happy with their work ethic, and their dedication to perfection. I'm talking about Harris Plumbing NG. Harris Plumbing NG. Never in my life have I seen such dedication to getting the job done absolutely perfect. You call them the best of plumbers, Harris Plumbing NG. 431-8633. I'll repeat that number again, 431-8633. Nathan Harris and his crew, Nathan Harris, the best. Harris Plumbing NG, you call them today. Okay, calls are welcome, 436-2244-1-866-927-4587. Did you hear, did you hear about a and I got to tell it like it is. There are those that are going to get all upset, but there was a black young man, a sixth grader, and he would not stand for the Pledge of Allegiance at his school. And he defied the teacher. The teacher said, Class, we will now all stand and give the Pledge of Allegiance. He wouldn't do it. So the teacher helped the young man to his feet. And all heck has broken loose. Now the teacher is on administrative leave. And the family is crying foul. They don't want their young man in sixth grade to pledge allegiance to this country. And I got to thinking about this. And I know I'll probably take some more heat for it. But hey, this isn't a bed of roses. 
But here's a family that probably should be down on their knees thanking God that they live in this country. Thanking God for all the opportunities in this country. Thanking God that their ancestors were ancestors, whether willfully or not, came to this country. Because of all the good things that have been afforded them and now their children. The United States of America. Oh, but no. Oh, 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 no. They see where there's going to be a lawsuit at the end of the tunnel, and they're going to try to make big bucks. In a country that's already giving them everything. Caller, you're going to have to hang on because I've got to get a weather forecast in here. Don't you dare go away. And the weather is brought to you by Mount Harrison Audiology and Hearing Aids. And they're located right across from the Minidoka Hospital Emergency Room in Rupert. I'm telling you, this is absolutely the number you need to call. 312-0957 for a hearing screening today so that you can hear what you're missing. Mount Harrison Audiology and Hearing Aids, the only locally owned and independent hearing health care practice in southern Idaho with the lovely Dr. Christine Pickup. You call them today, 312-0957. And now, here's the weather. Enjoy today because it looks like as we move through the week, it's going to feel more like fall. Looks like partly sunny skies for today. A little bit on the breezy side. Winds out of the southwest right around 10 to 15 miles an hour. Gusts possible as high as 30. Looking at high of 74 tonight. We do have a 50% chance of showers mostly after midnight. Going to be cloudy with a low of 44. Still going to be breezy as well. For tomorrow, 20% chance of rain. Showers with a high of 56. Overnight low of 38. And as for the rest of the week, going to be rainy. Feels almost like winter. For Wednesday, rain showers, high of 62, overnight low of 37. For Thursday, more rain showers, only a high of 48 with an overnight low of 35. And rain showers also expected for Friday with a high of 55. That's your weather for us at the ranch. Brought to you by Mount Harrison Audiology and Hearing Aids. Hold on a minute. <clears throat> A little frog in the throat this morning. And we certainly thank Dr. Christine Pickup. What a wonderful lady, and boy, does she know sound, and does she know hearing. Call, make an appointment today, 312-0957, Mount Harrison Audiology and Hearing Aids. Caller, you have been very patient. Thank you very much. Morning, Jeb. Yes, sir. Uh, The sixth grader that won't stand up and refuse to give a pledge of allegiance and his parents don't want him to will help. I'd be glad to help donate for the ticket to anywhere in this world that they want to be other than the United States. Yeah, I agree with you. Riley, it comes down to basics, and I'm not going to paint any kind of a different picture. These people need to realize they are blessed, so blessed, to live in America with all of the possibilities that are afforded to them. I'm sick of these crybabies. I'm sick of the Black Lives Matter. I don't care one hoot about these people that are crying and complaining when they live here in America. Everybody has the right to free speech, but if you don't want to be here, you have the right to leave, and we have the right to help you leave. That's what? my opinion on it. I, so, I absolutely... Either you like it or you don't, and if you don't, then get out. Thank you. where you came from to begin with. Amen. That's it, plain and simple. I like that kind of verbiage. I appreciate... Um, Riley, thank you. You said it all right there. All right, buddy. Thank you. Uh, You know, uh, Republican Congressman Stephen King from Iowa was on television this last weekend. You know, he has come up with, I think, the easiest solution for the immigration and all the DACA dreamers and everything. Wait a minute. We got rules and regulatory means. We've got a Constitution that we should honor, especially on this day, Constitution Day. You know, he came right out and he said, hey, illegals, go home. Go home. Go back to where you came from and then then reapply and do the right thing and the honest thing and come back in a legal fashion. Yeah, it's easy. Go home and then come back in a legal fashion. I I don't blame one iota what he said. I think he's 100% right. We've got to start following the rules and the laws. Gee, that's really hard to follow, isn't it? What are we having for? If we say that you're here illegally and you get booted out, oh, 
the Democrats, they stand up and they howl like a wolf at the moon. But wait a minute. Why should somebody be here illegal, break the law, and be awarded for it? The next time you go 65 and a 55 and get picked up for speeding, just tell them, oh, well, I was in a hurry. We're going to rip this ticket up. It's the same thing. It's the same thing. You have to have laws, and they have to be followed. Caller, good morning. You're on the air. Yes, good morning, Zed. <clears throat> you know, I remember when the letters USA was the United States of America. Today, <clears throat> those same letters mean something else. Under siege America. No matter what we try to do to bring this country back, we're wrong. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. You know, I, I was reading a story this morning, as a matter of fact, in Dallas, Texas area. There are various schools that are contemplating changing the name of their schools that have been the same for 40, 50, 60, 70 years. Because somebody might complain because some of the schools are named after George Washington or Thomas Jefferson, or Benjamin Franklin, or James Madison. What is going on, Tony? We're nuts! Well, unfortunately, this goes back to open borders. We're getting such a diverse group of people in this country that what we stood for years ago is going to change to whatever situations these people had in their own countries. Yeah. This, this country this country is in serious, serious trouble. And it is, and you know why? Really see an end to it. Yeah. Tony, it's so simple to solve the problem. It really is simple to solve the problem. There is a right. There is a wrong. There is a black and a white. There are laws, and that's the way that everything should be administered. Anybody that breaks the law, bang, they go to prison. I mean, we've got to start just following the rule of law. I don't care what color they are. I don't care what race they are. I don't care anything about that. If you do something wrong, you're going to break the law, and we can't support anarchy and chaos in this country anymore. Well, look what's happening to uh, California now. They're openly uh, a <clears throat> sanctuary state. Yeah. Jerry Brown should be impeached. Jerry Brown should walk out on the pier down in L.A. and look down at all the sharks and know that that's what he's going to feed in about 30 minutes. Jerry Brown is a waste of time for the state of California that also is a part of, supposedly, the United States of America. Well, I don't know. I, I don't see anything good coming out of what's happening around us. Uh, I really don't. I hate to be negative, but I'll tell you what, we've got to clean this act up. It's a mess. This country is going down the drain because of chaos and anarchy supported by the Democrats and the liberals, and nobody's going to change my mind on that. Well, look at the Emmy Awards last night. Oh, my that was disgusting. It is. it is. It was absolutely disgusting. It was nothing more than a rant and a rave from everyone going up to the podium to bash the United States and Donald Trump. And I think that was absolutely disgusting. None of those people, none of those people that were up there ranting against the president would have ever done anything like that against Obama. Never. Well, that was the Hollywood Communist Party. In full bloom. I agree. Tony, God bless you and Mary. Thank you so much. You're welcome. All right, buddy. Bye. Thank you. That was pathetic last night. I caught a lot of the excerpts. It was nothing, nothing but insulting President Trump. It was absolutely disgusting, and it seemed like one ignorant, underline that word ignorant, so-called star after the other tried to outdo each other as far as being even more pathetic in their in their verbiage up at the podium it was absolutely sick 
Okay, Zeb, calm down. Uh, don't forget your Magic Valley Les Schwab Tire Centers. All seven locations serving you with a big fall tire sale. Caller, I'll be right there. Stand by. And doing the right thing always matters at your Magic Valley Les Schwab Tire Centers. They have all the tires for your passenger cars, pickups, SUVs, many of which are on sale right now for the big fall tire sale. And they've got the best in brake service and front end alignments and shocks and struts and batteries. Batteries, important with the weather changing and getting colder. You stop in and see Lane and Rupert, Dave on Blue Lakes and Twin, Mike and Buell, Mike and Jerome, the Twist family in Paul, Daniel on Poline in Twin Falls, and Randy on Overland in Burley, your Magic Valley, Les Schwab Tire Centers. 30 seconds, caller, and then I've got to cut you off. Go ahead real quick. Well, quickly, uh, lost, uh, Hollywood, you know, since World War II ended or before that, they, they all gathered there or on the other coast, and here we're getting the evidence of it. Uh, the, the regular people of this world, of this nation, are not paying attention. There's been no blockbuster movies, and uh, things are slipping. ESPN's ratings are slipping. Uh, people are fed up with all this crap, and uh, like one lady said, if you think Trump's face is slipping, moving away from him, uh, you better think again because it's not. Randy, I got to run to the news. That was a great way to sum things up for this first hour. God bless you, man. We've got to take a little run to the news right now from CBS. We'll be back in seven minutes. Don't you go away. <laughs> Here we go. Good morning, good morning. Zeb at the ranch. I'm Zeb Bell, of course, with our major sponsor, your Magic Valley, Les Schwab Tire Centers, all seven locations. Great big fall tire sale going on right now. And some of our great advertisers like Western Waste Services. From the canyons of the Snake River and all across southern Idaho. My goodness sakes, I mean, to call them right now and tell them you need a dumpster. They've got dumpsters in various sizes. I mean, to clean out the garage, clean out your basement, clean out my office. Holy smokes, they can help you with all the dumpsters. Drop it off. You fill it up. They'll come and get it. That's right, Western Way Services. Always at your disposal. Call them today at 734-6969. Always at your disposal. By the way, too, I want to remind you about our friends, Ramsey Heating and Electric and Lennox. Oh, with the Lennox Home Comfort Systems. Yes, you can get up to a $1,600 rebate on a new Lennox Home Comfort System. All you need to do is find out more. Call Ramsey Heating and Electric at 678-0459. Ramsey Heating and Electric and Lennox, serving you. Real quick, also, I want to talk about a really good friend of mine, and that's Joel Hewer manager along with his family and his staff at Hanson Mortuary, 710 6th Street in Rupert. A number that you really should write down where it's very prominent in your home, 436-5636. That number again, 436-5636. When there's the passing of a loved one, they are there to help you always. And I want to emphasize this, always with the highest ethical standards with unquestioned integrity. Please call them today, 436-5636, Hanson Mortuary, 710 6th Street in Rupert, serving you. Let's go to the phone line right now, and this gentleman has become a uh, kind of a regular guest on my program, and he is an excellent writer for the stream. And this is a story that really raised my eyebrows a couple of days ago with Senator uh, Dianne Feinstein and Dick Durbin. Basically, they're trying to make the case on the Democratic left that if you're a believer, a Christian, you have no business sitting on the bench as as a judge. What? John Zamerick, come on in here and tell us more about this. Oh, hi, hi Zev. Yeah. Well, certainly if you're a faithful Christian, um, it was interesting that they were applying 
during their questioning of uh, Judge Barrett, uh, they were applying a religious test, an unconstitutional religious test, and they kept asking questions to determine whether or not Ms. Ms. Barrett was in fact, an or, as in, in Durbin's terms, an orthodox Catholic, meaning does she follow the church's guidance in her personal life? Uh, it's interesting because her testimony made it clear that she would not allow her religious beliefs to distort her understanding of the law. She was very clear. Uh, she had actually written an article where she said, for instance, a judge who doesn't believe in the death penalty for religious reasons should recuse himself from a case but should not meddle with the case and refuse to apply the death penalty because of his private religious views. Um, so that alone should be sufficient to say, I'm going to apply the law of the United States, not the law of my church. But Feinstein and Durbin were concerned that she might really be pro-life. And they were pretending that being pro-life is some private dogma of a particular church, like the Catholic Church's teachings about the Virgin Mary, or Jewish kosher laws, or Muslim rit ritual laws. But in fact, the, the pro-life opinion is something, you don't have to be Christian, you don't even have to believe in God to realize that an unborn human child is alive and ought to be granted protection by the government. That's not a religious opinion. There are plenty of Catholics who don't believe it, like Nancy Pelosi and Dick Durbin. There are plenty of non-Catholics who do believe it, like Franklin Graham. And uh, I'm trying to think, there are prominent Jewish rabbis who are pro-life, most Orthodox Jews. Ben Shapiro, the columnist, is strongly pro-life. Uh, it, it's not a religious opinion, but they were tapping into old-style anti-Catholicism of the kind that the Ku Klux Klan made infamous uh, to try to keep a pro-life judge off the court. Yeah, but John, and uh, we got some background noise and some clicking on the line, so I'm going to ask you if you can kind of shelter that phone a little bit. Uh, I mean, it's a, it's, sorry, it's just a bad connection. No, it, okay. It, I'm not doing anything with the phone. Okay. If you want to call me back on another line? I'm sorry, I, was, I didn't realize there was going to be problems on this line. No, that's all right. I tell you what, we'll try to live with it as long as we can here. Uh, John, it's not really a matter of being Catholic, I think. It's not really a matter of being a Christian. I think it's a matter that the left right now has shown their true colors, that they don't want anybody involved unless they're atheist or agnostic. I think absolutely they have a banner that they're waving that says anybody that shows they're, they're a Christian, they don't want in any part of politics. Right. Oh, absolutely. It, what, they don't want anyone who believes in the idea of natural law, the, the idea that there are really natural rights that come with being a human being. So th what they're doing, what the left is doing, is rejecting the founding philosophy of the United States. Uh, the idea that we hold these truths to be self-evident, that there are inalienable rights, they're rejecting all that. They're adopting a radical left philosophy that is based on selfishness, individualism, and nihilism. And it was all encoded, if you read the infamous 1992 Supreme Court decision, Casey versus Planned Parenthood, that decision basically says the, we, we no longer believe in the founding philosophy of the United States. We, 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 we claim that the liberty Americans treasure is actually the, the, selfish, the selfish solipsism of, of a teenager who wants to do what he wants to do and doesn't want to be criticized for it. There's no moral code underlying creation. There's no, there's no God, there's no judge, there's no natural law. That was not what America was founded on. But, they were, they, but the official judicial philosophy of the Supreme Court since 1992 has been that. And what Diane Feinstein and Dick Durbin are trying to do is to make sure that this new nihilistic judicial philosophy 
remains the dominant one on the Supreme Court and all other courts. John, let me ask you a couple of questions about uh, the respect for life in this country. And I know I might be getting off the rails here a little bit, but the Democrats are really pushing with uh, Bernie Sanders and Gilliland and others that we should go to a single-payer insurance, which would absolutely eliminate the care that's necessary for our seniors in this country, kind of a one-size-fits-all. What is going on with the Democratic Party and a lack of respect for life? Oh, the Democratic Party has uh, moved so far left. I, I, I remember when uh, Robert, when there was, uh, Senator Casey of Pennsylvania was a pro-life Democrat, and in 1992, the Democratic National Committee said he could not speak at the Democratic National Convention. That was the turning point. That's when they decided they were going to write off blue-collar Democrats, they were going to write off religious people, uh, and just adopt count on baby boomers who were raised in secular families and illegal immigrants who got amnesty, who don't listen to their churches on abortion. Uh, the, the Democrats basically abandoned their traditional base in favor of their new diversity coalition, where they're counting on, you know, counting on people, even Christians who are black and Hispanic, to vote according to their race rather than according to their religion. It's a very, very ugly strategy, and it's what turned the Democratic Party into the monster that America rejected narrowly in 2016. Are, what are your fears and your concepts about whether with uh, Dick Durbin and Dianne Feinstein and the others uh, really making kind of a uh, effort to eliminate any Christianity within our courts, etc.? What about the future? We are looking at the next three years still with the Trump administration, but then what about after that when they, the Democrats, in 2020 really try to regain power? Oh, yeah. I mean, it, the, the Democrats have made it clear that it's not safe for us to let them win a presidential election ever again, because they will, they will amp up the, per, the, process, the persecution of Christians. They will amp up the attempt to drive us from the public square and, and faithful Jews and anyone, anyone who believes in the sanctity of life. Uh, the Democrats, have, they won't even support local candidates who are pro-life. They've made it very clear they are the party of abortion. I've got to ask you. Party. I, I've got to ask you John, this morning, John, before I let you go, because you've written about all the chaos in our society, and when you look at the city of St. Louis, and I know I'm off the rails here a little bit, but I value your opinion. You look at the city of St. Louis and the acquittal of a white policeman shooting a black drug pusher and criminal, and uh, the uproar and the burnings, the lootings, the private businesses that have been just absolutely thrown to ruin. I'm telling you, the chaos in this society, what are we going to do, John? It's absolutely unreal what's happening to America. No, it is. We have to rally around our churches, look out for our families, exercise our Second Amendment rights while we still have them, organize, and be ready, because these are tough, tough times. We, we, we're going to have to fight for freedom. It's not just going to be handed to us on a silver platter anymore. But you've written about this in the past. It seems like if the courts make any decision that's against a minority, i.e. the blacks in this case, why there's going to be an automatic upheaval. There's going to be all the rocks and the burnings and the lootings. Why do those people think, according to Black Lives Matter, that they are above the law? They, they, they pretend that the law is so unfairly applied to the different races that essentially we live in a lawless society. So they, as a lawless mob, have to impose their own order. So essentially, they're a revolutionary group that considers the government illegitimate, and they're going to take over, fr they're going to overthrow the government. And that's the definition of a terrorist organization. Do you think that the Trump administration can put a thumb on this and uh, quell this anarchy, or is this something that we're just going to have to take care of on a private basis, the store owners, the community leaders, et cetera? How is this thing going to be stopped? Well, local police are supposed to enforce the law. If they don't enforce the law, it's the federal government's job to step in the way, the way it did in the South when, when the Klan was running rampant in the 50s. Uh, I don't know if we're at the point 
where local governments have completely surrendered their law enforcement capacity. But if it happens, if a local government lets Antifa or Black Lives Matter take over the streets, uh, the the, the National Guard should be federalized and sent in to impose order again. John, on this day, it is Constitution Day. 230 years ago, our, the greatest constitution in the world, was signed. I'd be amiss if I didn't ask you your thoughts on this Constitution Day, USA. Well, it, it's a great event. I mean, the U.S. Constitution is the wisest political document maybe ever created in the history of man. And we need to cling to it more than ever. We need to teach our kids about it. We need to realize those rights are our individual rights, and we have to be prepared to, to struggle for them, to defend them, to fight for them in every sense of the word, uh, because it's a sacred heritage our ancestors passed down to us, and it would be irresponsible for us not to pass it down to our children. John's America, I appreciate it. Uh, we do have a little trouble with the bad line this morning with the clicking. I apologize. So at this juncture, I'm going to say, John, thank you so much. You know I'm going to call you back in the next couple of days. Thank you very much for being on the show. Thank, Thank you, you so sir. Appreciate it. John Zamirik and talking about the complete mess. It was a heinous mess that was created uh, last week in that Senate hearing uh, in regards to Senator Dianne Feinstein and Dick Durbin that were just absolutely tearing apart uh, University of Notre Dame law professor Amy Coney Barrett, a Catholic mother of seven and a nominee for the Seventh Circuit Court of Appeals. And and they chewed on her primarily because of her being a Christian. Calls are welcome, 436-2244, 1-866-927-4587. Sometimes you get a bad line on the radio with the telephones, and I apologize for that. Hey, don't forget, I mentioned this last hour, and it really is the truth. Gary Shoresman, anything he puts on is going to be first class. Well, it is time again for the Old Settlers Dinner. And it's going to be Saturday, this coming Saturday, September 23rd at the Rupert Elks Lodge. Check in at 11, eat at noon, and oh, are they going to have the eats? Great big turkey dinner. Mm -mm, It's going to be good. All you need to do is be there, and this year's theme is Homesteaders, the story of the dry farmers who took up homesteads all over from Kamima to Black Pine Mountain, City of Rocks, etc. Really going to be interesting. Call Gary Shoresman for reservations. Call the number. Come on now. 312-1556. 312-1556. The 101st, 101st Old Settlers Dinner coming up this Saturday, September 23rd at the Rupert Elks Lodge. (laughs) I mean, last year, I guess they had a really good attendance, and I certainly hope they do again this year. Gary, he is just one of those guys that everything he does is going to be first class. I appreciate that. Hey, by the way, too... Talking about first class, I want to talk about Scott Jackson Trucking. They are in need of more people joining the Scott Jackson Trucking family. And it's just a phone call away if you'd like to apply to work for Scott Jackson Trucking, 311 Rose Street in Jerome. Number to call, 324-3004. That number again, 324-3004. Very competitive wages, benefit programs, and they don't lay off in the so-called slow seasons. Join a team of professionals at Scott Jackson Trucking in Jerome. That number again, 324-3004. You call them today. All right, now give me a call. 436-2244-1866-927-4587. You want to hear how absolutely messed up our United States is? And the left and some of the absolutely crazy things that they do. Well, here's another example. A so-called celebrity chef by the name of Anthony Bourdain. I've seen him on skipping through the channels. I've seen him on the Food Channel, etc. Well, he was asked about President Trump. And he said that if he, Anthony Bourdain, was cooking for President Trump, he'd kill him with hemlock. Now think about that. 
That is a direct threat against the President of the United States. From a liberal loon, this so-called celebrity chef, Anthony Bourdain, and he said if he was cooking for President Trump, he would kill him with hemlock. Can you imagine... Honestly, think about this. Deanna and I were talking about it all weekend. The loon left. If we, the right and conservative people, would have said anything like that against Obama, I'd still be in prison. Caller, good morning. You're on the air. Good morning, sir. Uh, On our deficit, if you do a line from China to U.S., and then you drew a line from the U.S., back to the terrorist countries, you would see exactly where all that money went. They ship it into America, they ship it back out to the terrorists, and then they hold us in debt so that they can have our country under their thumb. When you say they, who are you very carefully uh, relating to? Who are you talking about? I'm just talking about our deficit and how it's been used, because I look at all the trillions of dollars that were sent overseas to the terrorist countries Mm -hmm. from our country, and it comes in to us as a deficit, Yeah, and we end up owing the money for all the money that has been shipped out overseas, and it's come in from where? Yeah, I see your point, and I've I've maintained that you're right on your point to a certain extent on my program ever since I started this. A lot of the money that we send out in foreign aid over to the camel jockey countries, for instance, absolutely doesn't benefit anybody but terrorists that hate us, hate our way of life, hate our Constitution, and hate our country. I agree with you there. I, I do think that right now there has to be a tightening of the purse strings. There has to be a reevaluation of what we're sending who we're sending it to, and for what benefit. And I hope and pray the Trump administration has the backbone to do this, because quite frankly, there are a lot of leeches in the world that are getting our money, whether it's in Saudi Arabia or wherever, that are using that money to help build something that's going to tear this United States apart. Like nuclear bombs. Absolutely. I agree with you. Just the point I was making was how much deficit we have and how much money that we have sent out and the money comes in and goes out right back to the people that we are worried about. I'm not arguing your point at all. I mean, it's like a revolving door of helping the sinister, uh, not uh, caring for America people that absolutely would like to see us go to a third world country or even be completely removed from the face of the earth. These people don't like us, and yet we still try to be the good old boy, slap them on the shoulder, hand them a little money, and say, here, this will cure all your ills. No, it won't. I agree with you. God bless you, and have a good day. All right, sir. Thank you very much. You know, he brings up a really good point about basically trying to buy our friends. I felt this way uh, a lot more than I do now uh, during the Obama administration. I thought they were just basically handing checks to people. Oh, here, take these trillion dollars, and and you'll be our friend, won't you? No. Money's not going to buy friendship. Like the gentleman that just called, a lot of that same money that we give to them at our expense, which would be better suited helping our country and our strength and our people, is being given to people that want nothing more than the opportunity to see America fall. The man was right. Thank you. Calls are welcome, 436-224-1866-927-4587. I appreciate that phone call. Hey, let's not forget Let's Ride. I've got to head over there this afternoon, as a matter of fact, at 270 Highway 24 between Rupert and the World. My goodness sakes, they're open Monday through Friday, 9 to 6, Saturdays 9 to 4. And don't forget, do not forget, they have got all the brand new 
snowmobiles coming in. <laughs> I know. A lot of people didn't want to hear that. Snowmobiles, yes. It's uh, going to be looking more and more like that weather in the next couple of days. So check out all the great buys on the new snowmobiles over at Let's Ride. And don't forget, too, they've got all the four-wheelers and all the side-by-sides and all the accessories and, of course, a great service department over there helping you at Let's Ride. 270 Highway 24 between Rupert and the world. Yes, it is true. This is where the fun is sold. Really good people over at Let's Ride. You stop over and see them today. By the way, too, if you're over in that area, and uh, you know what I'm going to talk about next, and that's Cameron and Siemens Insurance, Highway 24 in Rupert. These people really are gifted at knowing exactly the best of insurance for you, your family, and your business. And I urge you to get a hold of them today over in the Rupert area. Cameron and Siemens Insurance, they are, of course, there to serve you. All you need to do. All you need to do is just take the initiative to give them a call and arrange an appointment over at Cameron and Siemens Insurance over in Rupert. And, of course, their number, 436-4424. That number again, 436-4424. Yes, Deanne? Oh, I am. Wheels, are we having trouble on this line? Is it breaking up? What's going on? It was there for a second, but you're clear again. Okay, well, let me know immediately... If it happens again, okay? Yes, I definitely All right. will. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, we're going to go to the phone line in just a moment, and we have another guest with us. And that, uh, of course, is going to be Dr. Ann Pierce, a lady that I very much value her opinion, and we're going to have her on just a moment. Stand by. Autumn Haven Assisted Living Center at 924 Christian Way in Rupert. The number to call for more information, 436-3200. They make every effort to make Autumn Haven even the best place for your loved one. Maybe you have a loved one in your family that needs that little extra help every day. Well, they're able to provide more one-on-one care. Please get a hold of them today. Take a tour. Find out more. Autumn Haven Assisted Living Center in Rupert, 436-3200. They're small compared to some, but with a bigger heart than most. Right now, we're going to talk to foreign policy analyst, Dr. Ann Pierce, contributor to the Washington Times, and and she's also the author of a book called A Perilous Path, The Misguided Foreign Policy of Barack Obama, Hillary Clinton, and John Kerry. Love this lady on the program. Good morning, Dr. Ann Pierce. How are you? Oh, good morning. Thanks for having me. Dr. Pierce, we are, in my opinion, in a mess. We've got the Democrats on the one side of the aisle that will not support anything that Donald Trump wants to do. On the other side of the aisle, the Republicans, they have no spine, no backbone. They won't stand up and say with their power that they're going to put forth various issues. And here we have the world just taking aim at us, especially with Kim Jong-un over in North Korea. Are we in as bad a shape as I think we are this morning? Well, the world is exploding all over. We are in such a precarious state. When you look all around from North Korea to Iran to Syria to Russian aggression and these military exercises, major, major exercises, Russia is now hosting um, right on the border with Eastern Europe and um, We have so many serious issues at hand, and everybody, I think, should um, show clearly to the American public that they are focused on these world problems. And the domestic problems are essential. We need to address them. But as you said, um, it is Democrats in Congress, it's Republicans in Congress to, to some extent, but it's also the Trump team, to, to some extent, when they get in front of microphones and um, kind of vilify Republicans in Congress and call them out and publicly humiliate them and keep sort of taking um, Republicans by surprise when we do have these urgent world issues that need attending to, and they're 
actually a lot of Republicans in Congress working extremely hard on these world issues, from everything from sex trafficking to um, putting stronger sanctions on Iran and North Korea to working on WMD proliferation to um, finding um, better ways to coordinate with our NATO allies and to uh, prevent Russia from taking yet the next step. Russia's you know, we never know what it's going to be being next. We had Chechnya, we had Georgia, we've had Ukraine, we've had Russia now with the biggest presence it has had in decades in the Middle East by way of Syria. And um, so we need all hands on deck, I think, to deal with the world problems. And it would be nice if there could be some kind of message of support um, basically for each other um, in, in dealing with these world problems. I really agree with what you said, Dr. Pierce, and I value your opinion, but over the last eight years up till now, I'm not seeing any finalization of the problems. In other words, if there's a problem, take care of it. Make sure that it is uh, exasperated to the point where there is no more of a problem, but I don't see that. It seems like the problems keep getting bigger and bigger all the time. Yeah, and that is that is one of the reasons that I'm a little concerned um, because uh, the Obama team, when it comes to the world problems, they really did a pass the pass the buck down the road. They um, uh, had this idea of somehow reaching out, negotiating with the world's worst dictators, and compromising with them and somehow we could create a unified if morally mute world in which we could all get along and of course all the world's worst dictators took that idea and ran with it um, and um, in the meantime there were a lot of republicans in congress pushing back urging stronger sanctions urging stronger um, uh, defenses you know urging um, that we accelerate rather than pare down our missile defenses in eastern europe and in you know, on the Korean Peninsula. So I am, what um, Obama so often did was to stigmatize Congress as a whole and then to stigmatize Republicans, and then he conflated the two, and then he would stigmatize Republicans in Congress, and he was so successful at it that um, it really provided a lot of cover for his own inaction in dealing with, with these grave problems. And my concern is that we can... Um, sometimes see that on the Republican side, but, but you know, in, in terms of Congress not supporting Trump and Trump not supporting Congress, and in the meantime, these world problems are waiting for us to solve. And um, But having said that, uh, I, I see the Trump foreign policy team as a whole um, as a, a great improvement over the Obama foreign policy team. If you get beyond the, um, in the rhetoric, which... Um, can be uh, a little out of hand. Uh, when you look at the actual policies on North Korea especially, I, I see a great improvement. It's just whether it's too little, too late to deal with this threat. <laughs> Let me ask you this, Dr. Pierce, and I have been a critic, a real solid, loudmouth critic against the United Nations for many, many years. Is it time, basically, for the United States, Nikki Haley, to sit at her desk at the U.N. and say, that's enough, boys, we're out of here, we're not going to listen to your dictates or watch you drag your feet through the sand and not do anything? Well, I tell you, Nikki Haley is a great example of an improvement um, over the previous administration. She is amazing. She stands up at the U.N. She, um, for example, has called out the Human Rights Council and said, if you're going to be the Human Rights Council, you have to have to actually stand up against the world's worst human rights violators and, and not be a safe haven for them. And um, she has insisted on public hearings, which are normally private, when she thinks that they're just going to be an excuse to get away with things behind closed doors that the American people would be appalled about, appalled about if they know in public. And an example um, is when Russia was constantly running interference for Assad, she finally said, look, if you're going to do that, we need to hold this hearing in an open setting so that people can see where you actually stand. And the more of that 
we get when it comes to China standing up for North Korea behind closed doors or any of these other entities that try to put on a smooth public face. Um, you know, the more the more we can put pressure on the UN to actually be more consistent in its policies and not be hide, hide behind rhetoric, the better. And I really admire these resolutions that Nikki Haley has managed to push through on North Korea. We do have the toughest ever um, sanctions now. The first one she managed to push through um, banned trade in North Korean coal instead of just capping it, and it tightened control over financial transactions. And then the latest one cuts textile exports, caps oil imports, sanctions certain North Korean entities. But again, you have to look at the countries that are enabling North Korea. They would not go along with the actual resolution the United States was hoping for, which was we wanted a total embargo on oil to North Korea. We wanted sanctions on Kim Jong-un himself, not just some other um, entities in North Korea. So uh, poor Nikki Haley is there fighting against the powers that be, but she has become a real force, and um, I really admire her. And a moral and a strategic front, she's constantly speaking up for what is right, in my opinion. Okay, Dr. Pierce, I don't beat around on this program. I'm not going to mess around uh, asking a bunch of maybe questions. I'm just going to ask you because I value your expertise. Where are we on a scale of 1 to 10 of somebody pushing the red nuclear button, whether it's in North Korea or here? Oh, I tell you, it is... um it's a hard question to answer, and all I can say is the hope is that we can avoid a military response, and obviously the urgent hope is that Kim Jong-un won't take these provocations so far as to actually launch a missile or a nuke at us. And the Trump administration so far has pursued what it calls a policy of maximum pressure on North Korea. And the idea behind that is to do everything short of war to stop this regime. Because when you're talking about war that involves nuclear weapons, obviously you're talking about something horrific and where there could be tremendous civilian casualties. So the administration has ratcheted up missile defenses. It has imposed the toughest sanctions it can and is moving toward um, stiffer sanctions. It is ramping up military exercises in the region, sending more firepower to the region. It looks like an aircraft carrier is going to be heading there next week. There are constant uh, communications between um, Secretary Tillerson and Matt, uh, Secretary of Defense Mattis and their counterparts in Asia and constant um, public announcements of more security deals, more cooperation between all of them. But um, having said all that, you just have to hope that given how long we did not put maximum pressure on this extremist regime, that this isn't too little too late. The recent um, tests that North Korea has conducted are extremely concerning, obviously. I mean, this, this last nuclear test, now that the experts have really had time to look at it. It looks like it was clearly in the range of a powerful hydrogen bomb, 12 times as powerful as the previous nuclear test. And then the missile test, the latest missile test, shows a missile that can go as far as Guam, which is what North Korea keeps threatening to do. So you hope we won't have to take a preemptive strike, as I said, because then you've opened up the military action. But... Um, I, it, it's, uh, it's a constant, constant concern for me, obviously, but for everyone now, as it should be. Dr. Pierce, I, I know this sounds like a relatively naive question with all the stories and all the news and everything surrounding Kim Jong-un and North Korea and us, but really the bottom line, what is his major beef? against us, the United States, that literally almost overnight he wanted to risk a complete annihilation of both sides with a nuclear war. I mean, what is it that he hates us so bad for that he's risking going to war? Yeah, 
I think that we have to be careful with this so-called rational actor <laughs> assumption about leaders. There are always all these academicians who are quick to say, well, they're doing this because of this rational reason, and they're doing this because of that rational reason. And um, when I look at North Korea, I see that Kim Jong-un and the North Korean government, they are provocative and building up their nuclear arsenal both because of their defensive concerns and because of their offensive aims. And those offensive aims are not just a desire for more geopolitical power in the world. They also have to do with the fact that this regime is utterly and totally fanatical. And we should not underestimate the fanaticism of this regime and its ideology. This is a Marxist totalitarian regime. I mean, it's a regime where I have said um, oppression is so extreme that you could say it's not just that North Korea has camps, it's that North Korea basically is one big concentration camp. I mean, the people in that country, the government determines where they can live, who they can marry, what they can do for work, what they can do after work, which usually involves a bunch of mandatory indoctrination sessions. And the, the propaganda is so pervasive and extreme. So our best hope in the long run is that the regime itself collapses. And that's I think everyone's hope in terms of if we can put the economic pressure uh, on the regime to such an extent that the regime finally collapses because it not only increases discontent among the people themselves but also uh, among the North Korean elites who um, obviously have a lot of reason to be discontent even if they on some sort of ideological basis uh, agree with Kim Jong-un. I mean, look how he treats his own leaders. He executes them at random for something they've said. And, um, and uh, that is why I really believe that in addition to economic and military pressure and deterrence and missile defenses and all that, that we need to be continuously publicly calling out this regime for what it is, Co you know, continuously pointing out the egregious human rights violations. We need to continuously shame China for supporting this regime and to point out how horrible it is that China actually forcibly repatriates uh, North Koreans who escape to China. China forcibly sends them back to North Korea to face awful fates in the camps, etc. And I, I think um, China has worked very hard in recent years to build up not only its military and geopolitical positions, but also it's worked very hard at its propaganda to spread this idea that it can be the new arbiter, or the new world order can, can depend on China, especially in Asia. So I believe that the more we can point out what China is actually doing in supporting this regime and to focus on these atrocities over there, um, the better, because really our, our best hope, what we should all pray for, is that somehow um, that North Korean regime collapses, because it is so fanatical. Let me ask you this question, Dr. Pierce. Uh, in your book, A Perilous Path, The Misguided Foreign Policy of Obama, Clinton, and Kerry, you had to do a lot of research. You had to find out the good, the bad, and the ugly about where we are to protect ourselves, the United States of America. Donald Trump has only been in presidency uh, nine months. Are we now, in just nine months, able to protect ourselves the way we should from a possible attack from North Korea? Well, the problem is that what better reminder of what doesn't work in American foreign policy than North Korea today? And we seem to have to continuously learn the lesson that when we're morally and strategically weak and complacent, and when we de-emphasize American ideals and downgrade American power, that is not going to lead to a more unified, peaceful world. It's going to lead to a more hostile, oppressive world. And, um, again, we have to learn this lesson, which we should have learned for one, once and for all after World War II, that we can't wait until the threat is grave to apply extreme pressure on extreme regimes. There is so much we could have done to pressure North Korea 
and China that we did not do over recent years and in recent administrations. And um, in the meantime, what was happening was the exponential progress of their nuclear and ballistic missile programs and the steady worsening of their atrocities against their own people. And um, it, it's kind of amazing. When you think if you look at history, you would have learned this lesson by now. But we keep waiting until we're in a crisis mode to actually apply all the pressure we can. And so you raise a good question, and I don't have an answer for it. I mean, is it enough? I don't know. I certainly wish we had pressured North Korea and its enablers a lot more a lot earlier. Let me ask you one final thought here this morning. What about our allies? Where are they in supporting the United States, Japan, South Korea, etc.? What about the support if all of a sudden we do have a war? Yeah, well, um, it's interesting that the new president in South Korea uh, was elected on these promises to return to South Korea's so-called sunshine policies, which were based on engagement and outreach to South Korea. And he um, managed to get elected on that platform, even though South Korea's own defense ministry had rejected sunshine policies because they had conducted a big study on them and determined they had been an utter failure. And if you really look at the record, engagement and outreach with North Korea has never really done us any good at all. It's only enabled uh, North Korea. So um, uh, what we have now is South Korea, even this very progressive president, um, really doing a U-turn and saying, yes, United States, we, we want all the help we can. We want missile defenses. We want to ratchet up our our military um, alliance with you. South Korea is scared now, as is Japan. I mean, these latest missile tests have gone over territory and caused the Japanese to have to duck and cover twice now. So uh, our Asian allies are very much (laughs) in our corner, and um, Nikki Haley's strong leadership and Tillerson's uh, making personal appearances to the U.N. have gotten us the strongest resolutions we've had so far. So uh, the Security Council, except for China and Russia, so our allies on the Security Council have supported us in this. But um, there are just so many problems with all these um, side deals that various um, countries have with North Korea, and and that is why you, you never read about this in the news. But, for example, um, Secretary Tillerson has been pressuring Thailand regarding the front companies, the North Korean front companies that it enables. And then he's been quietly pressuring Kuwait to cut back on the North Korean workers, which it allows in its country. And so there are all these um, bilateral uh, efforts that the administration is conducting behind the scenes to try to get... Um, all the different countries that enable North Korea in different ways to stop doing so. But boy, it's a monumental task. Absolutely. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm very honored to have Dr. Ann Pierce, and she is a foreign policy analyst and the author of the book called A Perilous Path, The Misguided Foreign Policy of Barack Obama, Hillary Clinton, and John Kerry. Dr. Pierce, thank you for your insight. Please come back in the future. Thank you so much for being on my program. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. Thank you. We are living in very scary times. Very scary times. And I would not be at all uh, ashamed to say that I'm scared. I really am scared. Uh, I don't trust what's going on. I don't trust uh, what's going on overseas with Kim Jong-un. I certainly don't trust what's going on with the Chinese. And I think all of us... All of us need to pray that someone doesn't just all of a sudden throw their hands up in the air and push the red button. 
It's time for our weather forecast, and our weather is brought to you this hour by some really great people that have been providing accounting services to the Minicash area for over 50 years. I'm talking about Phillips, Oaks, Goodwin, Crane, and Company. The very best of tax return preparation, tax planning, bookkeeping services, retirement planning, helping you, your family, and your business absolutely, like I said, for well over 50 years. Two locations, Burley and Rupert, Phillips, Oaks, Goodwin, Crane, and Company. And right now, here's Gina with the weather. Enjoy today because it looks like as we move through the week, it's going to feel more like fall. Looks like partly sunny skies for today. A little bit on the breezy side. Winds out of the southwest right around 10 to 15 miles an hour. Gusts possible as high as 30. Looking at a high of 74 tonight, we do have a 50% chance of showers mostly after midnight. Going to be cloudy with a low of 44. Still going to be breezy as well. For tomorrow, 20% chance of rain. Showers with a high of 56. Overnight low of 38. And as for the rest of the week, going to be rainy. Feels almost like winter. For Wednesday, rain showers, high of 62, overnight low of 37. For Thursday, more rain showers, only a high of 48 with an overnight low of 35. And rain showers also expected for Friday with a high of 55. That's your weather for Seven the Ranch. Very good job, Gina. We appreciate it. And the weather brought to you by Phillips, Oaks, Goodwin, Crane, and Company. Absolutely. These are the folks that can really help you. CPAs that can help people starting a business, a partnership, or a corporation. Uh, help you with your bookkeeping. Uh, really understand the situation. For you, your family, and your business, Phillips, Oaks, Goodwin, Crane, and Company. And Burley and Rupert bringing you the weather forecast for this hour. All right. Calls are welcome and appreciated. 436. <laughs> Man, I got so discombobulated listening a few moments ago. 44, uh, 2244. Pardon me. I've said that number a million times and it left my mind. I really was listening to what Dr. Pierce said and listening to about how over the last eight years there's been so much discarded and so much capitulation to foreign powers. And now overnight, in just nine months, this administration is supposed to protect us and the world. And doesn't it seem crazy to you out there in the radio land that here we are today, with all the threat of nuclear holocaust, and yet we have people that are complaining about our president, complaining that he won the presidency. We have the Black Lives Matter looting and burning and tearing things apart in the St. Louis community. We have people that are absolutely uh, disgusting and sick that are being chosen to speak at Harvard University that have been traitors to this country. We have schools that are going to change their names because, oh my, some of our forefathers uh, didn't live exactly perfect lives. When really we've got some really more important things to worry about. The world. And the world hating us because we are a free society and wanting to kill us. It just makes no sense to me. We should band together arm in arm and say to anybody you'd better back down you'd better sit down or we the united states is going to make you sit down and back down we need to be unified in a unified voice and not torn apart at the seams we're going to take a little break and uh, we're going to come back and talk to Pacific Legal Foundation Mark Miller, he always with interesting stories. And then we're going to talk to another security analyst at 1030, and that's uh, Dan Perkins. Dan, absolutely excellent. Stay tuned. Zeb at the Ranch. I'll be back in seven. And a good morning to you and yours, Zeb at the Ranch. I'm Zeb Bell with our major sponsor, your Magic Valley, Les Schwab Tire Centers, all seven locations serving you, along with some of our great advertisers, including Western Way Services, always at your disposal. Call them at 734-6969. We're going to have our next guest with us in just a few moments. I want to remind you on Thursdays, we have a segment called Cash Account. County 
school days. And we're very blessed to have two great sponsors, A Child's World at 1308 Overland and Burley. And don't forget, too, they've got all the new fall dresses there. They've got all the baby clothing and all the baby furniture, everything. All you need to do is stop into a family store, and that's A Child's World at 1308 Overland in Burley. Also, our thanks go out to Ambulatory Surgery Center at 1344 Highland Avenue, Suite E in Burley. The number to call so they can save you money on outpatient surgeries, 677-8888. That number again, 677-8888. Ambulatory Surgery Center and a Child's World, bringing you school days in Cache County. And right now, I'd also like to mention to you that if you've got uh, anything like dogs, kitty cats, roping steers, horses, hey, Ark Animal Hospital is a mixed animal practice, meaning big or small, they love them all, and they take care of them all. Remember Ark Animal Hospital at 750 21st Street near Connection Credit Union in Hayburn. The number to call, 678-1177. I'll repeat that again, 678-1177. And believe me, Dr. Bill and the whole crew, they can take care of your pets and your livestock. They know and they care. Ark Animal Hospital in Hayburn, 678-1177. Real quick, don't forget, you want to be nice and warm on the inside this fall and winter. Well, you can be with Ramsey Heating and Electric and Lennox Home Comfort Systems. Check it out. You could possibly get up to a $1,600 rebate on a new Lennox Home Comfort System. Find out more. Get a hold of Ramsey Heating and Electric today. Call them at 678-0459. It is a very special day for America. 230 years ago, Constitution Day. And here with the Pacific Legal Foundation is attorney Mark Miller. Good morning, Mark. How are you? Good morning, Zeb. Thank you for having me on. It's a very special day, but my sorrow is a lot of people haven't got a clue what it is and why it is. Yeah, I would agree with you that um, we have a long way to go in terms of educating the American populace in terms of how important the Constitution is and how much they take for granted that other countries don't have, even our, uh, you know, countries like Canada right above us, that people would think, oh, it's just the United States, just north of us. But no, in fact, they don't have the same freedom as we do, and it's because our founding fathers rebelled against the monarchy and, and use the Constitution to create the greatest country on the face of the earth. Let me ask you, Mark, uh, what about our education system? Let's start there. I know for a fact that some schools and some teachers are very diligent and direct about telling their students about the value of our great Constitution, and uh, really, it's the best of anywhere on the earth. But that's not the case everywhere. Catch-22, you know that, because I think you and I would agree that we don't want the federal government meddling in education because, frankly, the best way to educate is at the local level and have the local decision-makers deciding how their children should be educated. And you would hope that those local uh, teachers and the school boards would be making sure the Constitution got emphasized. But instead... You know, he who pays the piper calls the tunes. We have the federal government that gives all this federal largesse, our tax money, to these schools and then makes demands on them in terms of what they're going to teach, which oftentimes is not the Constitution. So on the one hand, the catch-22 is I would love to put the strings attached with that money instead of whatever the claptrap, trendy education news is, whatever it would be uh, these days. Instead, they should... We, we should put strings, if we're going to put strings, on that federal education money that they have to learn the basics of our Constitution, the basics about our founding fathers, the basics about Alexander Hamilton and Thomas Jefferson and George Washington and Ben Franklin. But on the other hand, I don't want the federal government involved with education at all anyway. So it is a difficult uh, problem to solve. But there's no question our schools have to do a much better job of giving the basics about what makes our country great to the students so that when they go to college, they don't demand safe zones and uh, complain about microaggressions. You know, Mark, every day I get on this program, 
And I'm so thankful that I was born and raised in this, the United States of America. But you know, when I look back at the the wise attitude and the absolute uh, looking ahead into the future of our forefathers, I am amazed, absolutely, totally amazed that they could construct such a great document that would govern us and lead us for 230 years. And I hope it is not repealed and goes down the drain with some of the radicals that are in this country. Well, that it's funny... When you, when you mentioned that about it being repealed, because there, there are actually movements on the left and the right to do, have a new constitutional convention, and uh, I, that, that personally would worry me, because I think our founding fathers, they were certainly not perfect, and you and I would agree on that, and we had to have a civil war to fix some of what they got wrong. But the bottom line is, that constitution that they created, there's no humans that are perfect. Well, no humans are ever going to create any perfect document, but in terms of creating the best country on earth, the most uh, successful country after 230 years, they couldn't have done much better. George Washington knew at the time that there were two uh, problems he did not solve that the founding fathers did not solve. And one was slavery, and the second was the question of what to do about Native Americans, about Indians. And so they, you know, he knew, the founding fathers knew they had not solved the problem, that all they did was kick the can down the road. But I would be very afraid, really, whether it be on the right or the left, because each has their own weaknesses, that if we were to rewrite the Constitution, we'd end up with a, right, a runaway convention, and um, we'd lose the rights. We'd basically lose the paradigm that our founding fathers created, which is that the government doesn't give us rights. Rather, our Constitution recognizes that our rights come are inherent upon us, and that instead we give certain powers to the federal government. It's the people, we the people, that give the power. It's not the government that gives us anything. And too many other countries get that backwards. And that was really the genius of the Founding Fathers. You know, I'd be afraid that we would lose that in the modern, postmodern world we live in, where lawyers think they can look to international law to tell us what's better than what we have in the United States and the like. You know, I'm sitting here and I'm just trying to visualize an absolute chaotic, anarchic uh, type uh, mess that a constitutional convention would uh, dictate. I mean, my goodness, the Republicans, the Democrats, the left, the right. I mean, you can't get anybody to agree on anything today. And I marvel at how they did this 230 plus years ago. I'm amazed at it. Well, I guess I, <laughs> they did get it done, but of course, Aaron Burr then took out Hamilton. And, you know, in my piece that I wrote, I write about Hamilton, and of course, this popular musical. Who would have thought that a musical about uh, the money man behind George Washington, of all things, would become such a hit show? <laughs> but in fact, they had their problems back then too. But you make an excellent point when you say what a convention would be like when the Republicans and Democrats can't get anything done. Because look at President Trump who has done a great job on much of what he's done, particularly when it comes to rolling back regulations and judicial appointments. But on the other hand, the Republicans couldn't even repeal Obamacare, which they promised to do for eight years, and now he's starting to cut deals with the Democrats. And that, again, sort of dovetails with the point you made that uh, they don't get much done, but I'd be worried about uh, a runaway convention, you know, President Trump in this case, making deals that really are not in the best interest of the country long term, even if in the short term there is some political sense to them. Let me ask you this from a legal lawyer's standpoint. Uh, can you kind of break it down as to what kind of chaos and anarchy would occur at a constitutional convention? And how would you stop this thing? I mean, once they open the doors and they've got a convention going on, I mean, the sky's the limit on the First, Second Amendment, whatever they want to tear apart and throw us under. How are they ever going to reconstruct anything? Well, that's interesting, too, when you say, you know, from a lawyer's perspective. Here in Florida, actually, which I'm the managing attorney of the Florida Office for Pacific Legal Foundation, we, we actually have an ability every 20 years to, for the people, we create a convention, or, a, well, not a convention, but a committee, and they ask for the public to make suggestions on how to amend the Constitution and how to revise our state Constitution, that is. And it goes through, like, a two-year process every 20 years, and um, it's generally been workable. This has been since the late 60s that we've, we've done this. Um, it, but the procedures are very uh, 
locked down, and so it would be tough for uh, a convention to get to go wild, if you will. But if we were to try to amend the federal constitution, you know, I'm, I'm a Catholic, so I'm thinking of the Second Vatican Council or what have you. You know, you're going to anger a lot of people if you change things that people don't think you need to change. And with the with our federal constitution, with the U.S. Constitution, you know, I, I think we've proven that the document holds up. And whether you're closer to Justice Scalia as I am or Justice Thomas in terms of thinking we need to stick closely to the text or you're a living constitutionalist, maybe like Justice Breyer or Justice Ginsburg, either way, I don't think either side thinks this is a document that needs to be thrown out and started over upon. It would be really a nightmare. And you and I both know uh, who would end up winning there, the bureaucrats in Washington. Yeah, but That's the bottom line. Mark, the gall and the audacity of some people, and they're blatant about trying to stymie. Let's talk about the First Amendment. There's a good case. And I know that Pacific Legal Foundation's been involved in free speech uh, cases. My goodness, telling people that they can't say certain things at a certain location or they have to go to free speech zones. How dare these people with, like I said, the gall and audacity, how dare they try to already limit the First Amendment? really gets at the heart of the government. You know, what does the government do? We control the government, or does the government control us? And those who want to dictate where you can speak think that they can, uh, that they should be part of that government, that they're part of those experts who can tell us what we're allowed to think and what we're not allowed to think. And that, again, gets at what the Founding Fathers were doing there with the Bill of Rights, where they were saying, all the rights really are inherent in the people, but here's a few rights that we have to make sure we've explicitly laid out so there's no question about them. And that First Amendment right that we, uh, many of us, would like to think is taken for granted, but isn't, as you said, with these safe zones and what have you, these free speech zones. In Canada, you don't have that free speech right that we have. And now if you question the orthodoxy on certain uh, principles that they think or that the experts beyond be on questioning, whether it be climate science, or uh, perhaps abortion, if you question, you can be actually brought up with charges or you can be sued and for what just saying what you think. And that's just simply antithetical to everything the United States is about. And I'm just thankful that our Founding Fathers got it right. Even um, Justice Scalia, you know, in the flag burning case, I think you and I and Justice Scalia would probably all, would, all three of us would agree that we would never burn a flag. We, we find it offensive. But I would also... Uh, as Justice Scalia voted in that case to uphold the fact that you can burn a flag and that's free speech, I would defend the right of someone who wants to do that to to make a point. I might disagree with their point, might think they're wrong, I might find it offensive. But if we live in a country where you can't say certain things, we're going to live in a country where I don't know who's going to decide. If you're on the left, do you want Donald Trump deciding what you're allowed to say? If you're on the right, do you want Obama, President Obama, former President Obama, deciding what you're going to say? I don't think so. And that's the beauty of what the Founding Fathers gave us in that first amendment. Yeah, but honestly, as a lawyer and a man that really understands what's going on with our Constitution and a very well-written piece, when you honestly look in the mirror, Mark, and say to yourself, did you really anticipate that Berkeley would be the uh, founding place, supposedly, of really the exercising of free speech? Look what they're doing there, and they're getting away with it. Yeah, it's really outrageous, whether it be Ann Coulter a few months ago or Ben Shapiro in the last week or so. You know, the idea, they try to shut people down by accusing them of outrageous falsehoods. For example, saying Ben Shapiro is a white supremacist, which, if you know anything about white supremacy in this country, um, it would be tough for a young Jewish man <laughs> to be described <laughs> as a white supremacist. But in fact, that's what they try to do. They try to shut you down because they're afraid of the ideas. And that's just simply not what our colleges are there for, if anything. The colleges should be the, the, the best place where we get free speech most protected. Um, and, and changes are made, oftentimes changes that the, that the uh, authorities don't want, but good, strong arguments are made. If we were to have shut down speech we didn't agree with in the 60s, for example, maybe you wouldn't have had people saying Vietnam is a bad idea. And so these, these, uh, the authorities certainly didn't like it, but they recognized that the kids, the college people, kids had something to say there. And it was to the credit in the 60s that they were by and large able to keep control but allow free speech as well. And that's really our responsibility now. I was listening to a professor in New York describing how 
when they have marches on free speech actually opposing Donald Trump at the Trump Tower, the authorities create a place for the people to march, and then there's protesters who support President Trump, but they create a bit of a buffer zone between the two so that there can't be violence between the two. And I think that that is a reasonable way to ensure that everyone's First Amendment rights are protected, but at the same time prevent the violence that one side or the other is trying to use, oftentimes lately the left, the Antifa or whatever they're called, is using to try to shut down speech they disagree with. They should be allowed to protest, but they shouldn't be allowed to use violence, a heckler's veto, if you will, to shut down speech they disagree with. Absolutely. You know, this is a speculative type question, but I'm sure you've probably thought of it many, many times. When you talk about our Constitution and all the values, and I am holding right now, if you're looking on my camera on the Internet, zebbell.com of my program, I have one of the most dog-eared, highlighted copies of the Constitution you've ever seen. But I wonder... I really wonder how many of our legislators, our congressmen and our senators, really know and understand our Constitution. Again, I'm sorry, I got feedback from your... No, I'm sorry. I, I was just sitting here, and it's a speculative type question to you, Mark, but really, I wonder how many of our senators and our congressmen really know and understand our Constitution. What are your thoughts on that? Well, I, I think that you're right. I don't think many of them do. I think we have some good ones, but too many of them just use it as a platform to advocate for whatever they want, for example, Bernie Sanders or what have you, or Nancy Pelosi. Um, um, I know my local congressman, Brian Mass, who is a veteran of Iraq. You may have seen him. He's the congressman who lost his legs yes. from an IED yes. fighting in Iraq for mm-hmm. our country. Um, he, he knows the Constitution. And like you, he's got one of those dog-eared constitutions. And uh, I know our secretary up there in Interior, Zinke, who I think was from your area, um, he certainly has a dog-eared constitution, but too many of them don't understand that going to D.C. doesn't give them unlimited power. And it's radio shows like you, Zab, people like you, I think, who can keep them honest. And um, that's, that's the best we can do. That's what Pacific Legal Foundation tries to do. We, When these bureaucrats or our elected officials, local, state, or federal, try to get beyond what the Constitution gives them in terms of powers, we will sue them, and we usually win. Let me ask you one final thought here, Mark. You mentioned in the opening remarks about a possibility of a constitutional convention. I am scared to death of that happening. But really, on a scale of 1 to 10, where are they as far as trying to get that implemented and organized? Is it something that we should just kind of look at and be wary of, or is it something we need to really be concerned about right now? Well, number one, I find it reassuring, Zeb, that you would be so cognizant of the risks. And do I think it's going to happen tomorrow? No, but I think that there are a number of people, and I want to make it, I want to emphasize, well-meaning people, they they think they can do a good thing. And um, I've had plenty of um, conservative thinkers mention the idea to me. And you can go on the web and you'll find their websites and the like. Uh, they mean well, but I don't think you can improve, up, improve upon, other than incrementally, perhaps but with an amendment at the right time and place, although we haven't had one for a while, uh, on the Constitution. And so it's just something for you to be aware of when you have a guest come on. It would not surprise me, that if you hear from someone soon uh, in the near future who wants to. Because when you look at our, you know, we have mo- majority Republican state legislatures and governors, and then you have the, the House and the Senate Republican-controlled, control- and then the White House Republican controlled. So this idea that there's this um, quote unquote Republican, as you and I both know, um, in control that they they might think they can do a good thing, but I I shudder to think, um, you know, rhinos or whatever you want to call them, that they can do anything to improve upon the uh, Constitution. I want to congratulate you on a very well-written piece. Mark Miller, Managing Attorney of Pacific Legal Foundation's Atlantic Center in Palm Beach Gardens, Florida. Thank you. And tell everyone how they can go and read this piece and really understand your thoughts about our Constitution. Thank you, Zeb. So I would encourage your listeners to to go to pacificlegal.org. So Pacific Legal Foundation, just drop the word foundation. And you'll find our new website. We've actually launched a new website, a revised website with um, and Justice for All, the Liberty and Justice for All. What we do at Pacific Legal, we're a nonprofit law firm 
people have donated money to us for the last 44 years to represent private business owners, small property owners, individuals who are in fights with the government, state, local, or federal, oftentimes federal. I, I'm often involved with lawsuits against the EPA and the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers. And we defend people's individual constitutional rights. And we usually win. We've won nine of our last 11 cases in the Supreme Court of the United States. I was involved with two of the, the two last wins. And it's because of radio shows like USAB that we get our message out and we're able to represent property owners like Annie Johnson out there in the West, um, the uh, Sacketts, the uh, Pierce family in um, North Dakota and Minnesota. That was our most recent win at the Supreme Court. But they hear about us, and, or maybe their lawyers contact them to us, connect them to us, and then we take their cases and we uh, establish constitutional rights and make sure our Supreme Court justices are protecting the Constitution the way you and I think it should be protected. A absolutely. Mark Miller, thank you with Pacific Legal Foundation. Come back soon. Great job, Mark. Really appreciate it. God bless. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, right now, and that was really interesting. His piece is uh, perfect, the way that he worded it, and I urge you to go to their website and read more from Mark Miller. We're going to have our next guest coming up in about five or six minutes, but right now I want to remind you of some very important things. First and foremost, Scott Jackson Trucking out of Jerome. They are looking for more people to join the professional team, the Scott Jackson Trucking Team. That's right. And they've got very competitive wages for their jobs offered and benefit programs, and they don't lay off in the so-called slow seasons. They're looking for professionals to join their professional team. All you have to do is call them and find out more information. 324-3004. That number again, 324-3004. Scott Jackson Trucking out of Jerome. Fully licensed and insured to haul in the Pacific Northwest and Canada, and they're looking for more people to join their team, the Scott Jackson Trucking Team. You call them today, 324-3004. Also, I want to remind you, too, about some really nice people over at Autumn Haven Assisted Living Center at 924 Christian Way in Rupert. The number to call and find out more information is 436-3200. And as I've stated, you can go by the uh, a location of Autumn Haven Assisted Living Center and take a tour anytime. They welcome you to come by and visit the facility. And they make every effort to make Autumn Haven the best place. Please. Remember, for more one-on-one -on -one care for your loved one, Autumn Haven Assisted Living Center, 924 Christian Way in Rupert. The number to call, 436-3200. They're small compared to some, but with a bigger heart than most. Right now, we're going to send it back over to Wheels in our studio, and we'll be back with our next guest in about four minutes. And now, back to Zeb at the Ranch on AM 1230 KBAR. To reach Zeb, call 436-2244 or toll free 1-866-927-4587. And now, here is Zeb Bell. Thank you very much and welcome back to Zeb at the Ranch on a Monday. You know, of all the guests that I have on this program, the ones that I invite back on numerous times are the ones that I really honestly believe with their knowledge of all the information they are worthy of telling you really what's going on in the world today. This man that I'm going to introduce to you now is one of those people, and he is absolutely well-versed on national security, and he's the author of the Brotherhood of the Red Nile Trilogy, which centers around Islamic nuclear terrorism against the United States. And I say good morning again to Dan Perkins. Dan, good morning, sir. Uh, wheels, uh, have we got it? Dan, are you there? I couldn't hear you. Please go ahead. Yeah, I'm here. Can you hear me? Uh, no, I can't. Uh, are you on a... He's probably on the speaker phone, maybe, so uh, let me go ahead and see if he can... Uh, Dan, please go off the speaker phone and go to the handheld, because evidently it's not coming through. Thank you. Okay. Yeah. Uh, evidently a little problem there. Try to get it rectified. And are you there now? Yes, sir. Ah, right 
Yes, I can. Thank you very much. Uh, Dan, uh, as I said earlier in my remarks, I really respect your knowledge about what's going on in the world today with terrorism. And, of course, you're the author of the Brotherhood of the Red Nile trilogy. But I want to talk to you a little bit about where we are today. I am very concerned as a father, a grandfather, a husband, uh, my family. I'm very concerned. Where are we, do you think, with what's going on with North Korea and the Iranian deal? They're basically snubbing their noses at us. Where are we? Well, where are we? Great question. Um, I'm, I'm not sure either side knows where they are. Um, we are deploying assets. We're in the middle of an exercise with the South Korea. We've deployed B-1 bombers and fighter jets to do some overflights uh, close to the North Korean border. But <clears throat> we've got UN week this week, and President Trump is going to speak, and most of the world leaders will speak. Uh, he's told through his uh, press secretary that he's probably not going to meet with the uh, representative of the North Korean government. Um, but it, it, what concerns me is that certain things are beginning to break down. And let me give you an example. The Chinese and the Russians uh, voted for increased sanctions on North Korea. Now, just to give you some idea what happened, one of those sanctions was uh, a limit on the amount of crude oil that could be imported into North Korea. Now, the bulk of the imported oil that North Korea imports comes from China. So China agreed to cut in half the amount of crude oil that they export to China. From Labor Day weekend to last Friday, the price of gasoline in North Korea has gone up almost $10 a gallon. Wow. The price of diesel fuel per gallon is about $8. How much is that? That's in, in case of diesel fuel, that's a 61% increase in the cost of fuel mm. since Labor Day weekend and a 46% increase in the cost of gasoline. Um, and, and the principal export to, as I said earlier, to North Korea for crude oil is China. I think China is also very disturbed about the nuclear test, the hydrogen test, because of the fallout uh, from um, that test created a fallout that landed in China. Mm -hmm. So they're very concerned about if he's going to cont continue to test and is he going to test bigger and bigger devices. The last one created a 5.6 to a 6 point on the Richter scale earthquake. So China is becoming more and more nervous about the risk to them by allowing him to continue. The Russians really don't have anything at risk, per se, uh, although Russia and China have 400,000 troops on the North Korean border, ostensibly to pre prevent refugees from coming out of North Korea going to China or Russia. So it's very unstable there. We, um, we continue to rattle the saber, but uh, I'm not sure that it's going to do any good. And I wrote a piece for um, Newsmax about two weeks ago when I said Americans are probably going to have to die first if we're going to resolve this issue. I don't think we will do a preemptive strike, but I think Kim will strike. Let me ask you this, Dan, and of course you're the expert on this, but now that Kim Jong-un is backed into a corner like a rattlesnake and there's nowhere to go with the increased sanctions, is he very possibly going to hit that button? I mean, are the sanctions having a negative effect or a positive effect on possibly maintaining peace? Well, I don't think that the sanctions are in fact designed to maintain peace at all. I think the, the sanctions are designed to put pressure on him and his people to do something about what he's doing, um, whether or not he will do that. You know, he has, as a leader, he seems to have very little disregard for his people, regardless of whether they're civilians or military. 
Uh, he had people killed who he didn't feel cried enough at his father's funeral. Uh, so he's not functioning as a rational person. The fact that his, his power is off 50% of the time, the fact that his people are starving, is not important to him. And so that those sanctions that are really affecting the life of the people, the common people in North Korea, the question is, will, will that anger, will that hunger uh, and, the, and the disdain for the suppression of rights and life cause the North Korean people to rise up against him? That's the big question. You know, with your uh, study of this issue, and then last week the Senate rejected a bipartisan push for a new War Authorization Act, which you wrote about. Tell my audience a little bit about your thoughts about uh, relying on a 16-year-old law. Well, you know, we have treaties that are older than 16 years, but, but what we need is... Uh, a reaffirmation, you know, and, and you, you're raising a very interesting question because I was thinking about this very issue over the weekend, and I saw where the left was criticizing the left leadership in working with Donald Trump to do some things uh, on the uh, budget resolution and uh, and the deficit and the ceiling, and I, I, I'm I'm struggling, and maybe you can help me here. Um, I, I think that both parties as entities are in serious jeopardy. Mm -hmm. uh, I, th I thought Donald Trump, when he was elected president, was the first independent candidate to be elected president. Yeah, he ran on the Republican ticket, but he basically was an independent. And functionally uh, is trying to put the good of the country ahead of everything else, and that means that he's willing to cross the border uh, that the terrible border between Democrat and Republican and, and try and, and create solutions to problems. And so I think there's a p possibility that there's a new party being formed and it may be only a one-party country. You know, I really I want to get into this, but we have a caller waiting on the line. Dan, hold on, please. Caller, you're on the air. Go ahead, please, with your call for Mr. Perkins. Caller, go ahead, please. They're so isolated, insulated, that they don't understand. Are they really so uninformed and ignorant that they don't realize what kind of a situation they're being put through because of the insanity of this dictator? And is there not any way to leak information in there? Is there I guess there's no Internet to the people. I, I mean... It seems to me like they would overthrow this loser, you know, if if they knew better. I'll hang up. Uh, respond to that, if you would, please, Dan. Sure, that's a good question, and, and it's a, and it's a, it's a, it's an important question. Understand that the that the society in North Korea is what is we call a closed society. They don't have open, free election. They don't have access to all the news media. They don't have access to the internet, as the gentleman pointed out. So the information that goes to the people is controlled by the government and by the representatives of Kim. So whatever message they put out is the message that the people hear, by and large, and believe. And so they're not stupid, they're not dumb, they're ill-informed because the ability to get alternative thought is greatly reduced. You know, Dan, uh, I want to kind of shift gears a little bit if I can. I've only got a few minutes left in this segment. And with your book, The Brotherhood of the Red Nile Trilogy, which you... Uh centers around Islamic nuclear terrorism against the United States. Give me your thoughts about what's happening in Europe. And some people would say, oh, it's just the lone wolf attack with the buckets on the subway, the trains, etc. But are Americans that naive to think that it can't happen here and will happen here? Oh, absolutely we are. Uh, we, we, we know nothing about these people, their religion, why they hate us, why they want to kill us. Uh, we have a very low understanding of what drive these people. And so um, what we're seeing in Europe is a new level of tactics. It's lone wolf, but again, people, if they don't remember the past, are destined to repeat it again. 
uh, I suggest to you that the leader of this movement said three years ago that the tactics that need to be in play are individual or small group attacks, and that's what they're doing. And they're using trucks and cars and 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 uh, whatever to inflict death and destruction and terror and fear, because that's what terrorism is about, fear, uh, in many places around the world. And and it, it's already coming to the United States. We, send, we tend to somewhat be blind of what's really going on. But it's coming here and will continue to come here uh, slower because of what Mr. Trump, Trump has done about the borders and, and trying to control immigration. But it's coming, and, and, and I would say to you, I said several years ago, when the, my second book came out, it's not a matter of if they're going to bring a bomb to the United States. It's only a matter of when. And there are, as we expand the number of countries that have nuclear weapons, we expand the challenges of security and increase the opportunity of terrorist organizations getting nuclear devices, and there's no place greater they would love to bring them is into the United States. You know, Dan, of all the people I have on my radio program every single week, I'm amazed, and maybe, tell me I'm wrong, but I'm amazed at the naive attitude that many of the people in government have, and I'm referring to people like Jay Johnson and others with the Homeland Security. They just seem like they don't have the book open and they're reading the pages. Am I wrong? No, I think there are. I think there are a lot of people in Congress who are naive to the threat from Islam. Uh, they can't, for whatever reason, can't seem to believe that it's possible that a group of people somewhere in the world would hate us so much that they want to destroy us, and they will never assimilate and join our culture. They just can't fathom that that's possible, and so that we have to treat these people in a different way in order to have peace and harmony in the world. And they don't understand that under the Muslim religion, um, true believers are not permitted to assimilate with Christians and Jews. And this is the problem that's being exacerbated because people like myself and others are questioning about the refugees coming in here, the lack of information about knowing who they are, what they represent. And I feel like sometimes I'm just beating my head up against the wall on this program, Dan, because I'm criticized being a bigot and a hate monger right here on a local basis with people that want to bring in many, many hundreds to thousands more. Right. And... and and again, it's a matter of ignorance on the part of a lot of people in this country. They don't understand that true vetting of an immigrant needs the cooperation of the country in which the immigrant is leaving. We have no political relationship for Syrians. So there's no way under our current laws to vet a Syrian refugee coming into the United States because we have no access to the Syrian government records on that person. And everything else we do is conjecture. So because we don't have those records, we don't have that relationship with the Syrian government, we make decisions about bringing these people in with not, without having all the information that we need. And that's a risk that we're taking that we don't have to take and shouldn't take. Uh, Dan, I really appreciate you taking the time to come on my program. And uh, tell us a little bit more about the books, The Brotherhood of the Red Trilogy. Where can they be obtained? Uh, outlets, etc. please. The books are available at Amazon.com. You can also go to my website, danperkins.guru, and you can see interviews about the book, television shows, uh, uh, interviews like yours. Uh, commentary that I've written for all the blogs that I write and other books that I've written and uh, it's, it's a rich website that gives them a lot of content and a lot of things to think about the sequel to the trilogy is coming out probably in October uh, forced into it by the readers who said you can't leave us at the end of this trilogy we want more so that's coming out uh, sometime in October and I'm excited about that and um, I have a new children's book coming out about dementia, which I'm very excited about. It should be out hopefully by the end of the month. And um, I'm working on my first historical fiction, Abraham Lincoln and the Second Assassin.
Absolutely. Dan, by the way, uh, I hope all is well with you, your family, and your property in Florida. Did you get out away from the storm, hurricane? Uh... Yes, we went up to uh, Asheville, North Carolina, but when we got back, the house was fine, but a lot of very large trees were broken or, or, or pushed over, so you guys still a lot of cleanup to do. Well, God's Thank blessings. Uh, God's blessings to you, and thank you again for being on my program, and know that I'll call you back soon. Thank you very much, Dan Perkins. Thank you, sir. Enjoy. All right. Bye. Thank you. Uh, one of my favorite guests, Dan Perkins, and he is an expert. He knows. He understands. He has written for years about Islamic terrorism. Uh, we got to get a weather forecast on here right now, and the weather is brought to you by our dear friend Don Scarrow and the crew at Scarrow's Meats, 331 North Road, Jerome. Mm-mm. Number to call, 324-7657. Or you can go to their website and find out more about their retail meat department at scarrowsmeats.com. All the delicious meats, I mean, whether it's salami or bratwurst, I love bratwurst, and everything is so delicious, all the marinade meats and the smoked meats oh it's just all so delicious at scarrow's meats in jerome right now here's gina with the weather enjoy today because it looks like as we move through the week it's gonna feel more like fall looks like partly sunny skies for today a little bit on the breezy side winds out of the southwest right around 10 to 15 miles an hour gust possible as high as 30 looking at high of 74 tonight we do have a 50% chance of showers, mostly after midnight, going to be cloudy with a low of 44, still going to be breezy as well. For tomorrow, 20% chance of rain, showers with a high of 56, overnight low of 38, and as for the rest of the week, it's going to be rainy, feels almost like winter. For Wednesday, rain, showers, high of 62, overnight low of 37. For Thursday, more rain, showers, only a high of 48 with an overnight low of 35, and rain showers also expected for Friday with a high of 55. That's your weather for us. That's the right answer. Appreciate it, Gina. Thank you very much. And, of course, brought to you by our friend Scarrow's Meats. Don Scarrow and his whole crew at 331 North Road, Jerome. Number to call, 324-7657. They are changing the way we eat one delicious bite at a time. Good morning, caller. You're on the air. Go ahead, please. Good morning, Jeff. For once, I have good news. And that is, I was listening to the local news in between your breaks, and they said that Elko County, which encompasses Jackpot and Elko and Wells, are not going to adhere to the marijuana program. I am really afraid, Keith, about the legalization of any what has been in the past illicit, illegal product. Because what kind of a message is it going to send to the kids? And right now they've got enough on their plate to worry about as it is. Well, it's jackpot is so close. Well, it's on the border. And yep. A lot of people go to jackpot, and I think it would just be in a tremendous... Uh, distribution center for marijuana is what I think. Among other I things. I what the rules are. But, yeah. Well, I certainly appreciate your comment, as always, and uh, I'm going to do a segment on that later on this week, so you stay tuned. Okay. Keith, God bless you, man. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. See you. Bye. All right, sir. Um, Before we go this morning, I had a little note, and I want to take care of this. We are in the process of getting boots for Texas. Uh, Marty and Hayden Mickelson, myself, we're going to have a great big boot drive right now. I talked to a lady by the name of Mary Wilson this morning down in Dayton, Texas. It's in the outlying area from Houston. And what a nice lady. And she told me that the students down there, and we're going to be working primarily through the FFA chapters down there in Houston, Texas. She told me that they just don't have any boots. They're they're gone. They're all gone in the water. They're ruined. Some homes are still under four and five feet of water. The kids have been shipped off to other people so they can go to school. And she told me, she said, when she heard we were going to have a boot drive up here, she was absolutely ecstatic. And so we need ladies and men's boots and please these are i want good quality boots please not any rejects or the heels are off and there's holes in the side but we need some good boots we're going to have this boot drive going down to texas and uh, also 
tack, horse tack equipment. I mean, whether it's saddle pads, bridles, or whether it's uh, anything leather, even old saddles that you don't have a need for that still the trees are good and everything, please, we're going to be collecting all this. And we've got a truck and trailer going down to Texas in about another three or four weeks. As a matter of fact, my good friend Marty Mickelson is going to be on the program with us again in the next couple of days. Now, I am tomorrow morning going to announce where you can drop off these boots, tack, etc., and then we'll weekly try to get there and pick them up and put them in a centralized source. But we do need boots of all sizes. And uh, please, ladies' boots, men's cowboy boots. Uh, I've got about, let's see, how many do I have? Deanne's donated about two. I've donated about four already. I know that we've got others that are asking merchants, hey, go out and buy a pair of new boots and donate them, and we'll take them to Texas. That That's what we're working on right now. Wednesday, we're going to have a lady from Orange County, Texas, on the program, and she's going to be talking about their FFA, and we're going to find out a lot more. Uh, I want to remind you, too, our major sponsor, your Magic Valley Les Schwab Tire Center's Big Fall Tire Sale going on right now. Don't forget that. Passenger car tires, pickup, and SUV tires on sale. Now's the time to stop in there. You know, before the winter sets in, you better go in there and have your brakes checked. They've got excellent brake service with highly trained brake technicians, front end alignment, shocks and struts, and, of course, batteries. With the weather getting colder, you want to make sure you've got a good battery. They've got them all at all seven locations of your Magic Valley Les Schwab Tire Centers. Lane and Rupert, Dave on Blue Lakes and Twin, Mike and Buell, Mike and Jerome, the Twist family in Paul, Daniel on Pole Line in Twin Falls, and Randy on Overland in Burley, the best. Your Magic Valley Les Schwab Tire Centers. We're going to get out of here for today, and we're going to remind you, we'll be back here again tomorrow morning at 8.06. Ride the horse for three hours till 11 o'clock. Zeb Bell, Zeb at the Ranch, and right here on K-Bar, 12.30 a.m., and then streaming live on the network, Internet, all over the world on ZebBell.com. Remember, the way things were are the way things ought to be. See you tomorrow morning.